Google Gemini was recently released and it's already making a major impact. For example, did you know Gemini can automate your work or even act as a tutor? Plus, it's completely free. And that's just a start. In this video, we'll look at nine ways to use Gemini AI and how these hacks can potentially change the way you work. Let's get into it. To get started, you want to visit aistudio.google.com and log in with your Google account. Once you're logged in, you'll be brought to the screen. Over here on the right, you want to make sure you're using the Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental Model, and that'll get us started. All right, let's get into the hacks. Just know that as we go through these hacks, everything is going to be demonstrated in real time with minimal editing, so please pardon any choppiness or rough edges. Okay, for this first example, I'm going to start over here where it says Create Prompt, and I'm going to upload a video into Gemini and then copy in a prompt that asks Gemini to analyze the video, provide a summary, and then most important, suggest a title and some thumbnail designs. So I'll copy my prompt first, and then I'm gonna cruise over here and click on the plus sign. You'll note the various types of file types you can upload. So I'll go over here and click on upload file. Let's choose the one we want, go with this one. We'll give it a little while to process. Looks like it's completed, so we'll go ahead and click on run. Let that process as well. And there we go. Okay, so since I created this video, I do know the content in it and it does look pretty accurate. That said, I'm gonna go down here and ask Gemini for a different type of thumbnail design because I like more minimal designs. So let me go down here, add in the prompt and see what it comes back with. Okay, and it did come back with a couple cool suggestions. And that'll do it for this hack because you get the idea of what it can do. The video analysis was pretty cool and it did make some cool suggestions. Yet, let's move on to the next hack. For our next demonstration, I'm going to go over here and click on Prompt Gallery. And this is where Gemini will showcase some of its abilities. You can look at these on your own time. Yet for today, we're going to look at two specific ones. We're going to check out the What Is This prompt. Then we're going to look at this Marketing AI to see how that performs. So let's start off and click on this What Is This prompt. This looks pretty intriguing. It seems like we can upload an image. Now, prior to recording this, I did take a photo of a multi-tool that I use when I go out biking and I've already uploaded it. I'm gonna submit it to Gemini to see what it comes back with. Let's go down here and click on add test example. I'll then go up and click on image, grab the one from my drive, go ahead and insert that. And we'll go over here and click on generate response. And let's see what we get. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Not too bad and pretty accurate. Let's move on to the next hack. Okay, for our next hack, I'm going to stay in this prompt gallery and scroll down here to where it says Marketing AI, and let's see how good this is. So go ahead and click on that. And it seems like we can upload an image, and then Gemini will give us some marketing tactics. Let's see how good it does. So I'll go down here and click on Add Test Example. For the input, I'll go up here and click on Image, and then I will go with this sample notebook and paper. And for the test input, I'm going to copy in some text that basically says we are targeting students who prefer to take notes on computers. And the theme of our marketing campaign is going to be that paper does not need batteries. Let's go over here and click on generate response and let's see what we get. Okay, not too bad. Pretty cool. So it may not be the best, but it does give us a place to start, which is always good. Let's move on and check out the next hack. So for this example, we're going to ask Gemini to scan this PDF document and then return a summary for a 10 minute presentation that we have to do. In this case, what we want to do is make sure the output format is set to text. Let's go ahead and share our screen. Hey Gemini, are you there? Can you see the PDF file on my screen? Great, can you do me a favor and scan it and then give me a summary for a 10 minute presentation that I have to do? And right there it is, not too bad. Hey Gemini, can you go a little further with this and give me some more details, please? So not too bad. Looks like we can give Gemini a file to review and it'll give us a summary. That'll do it for this hack, let's keep going. All right, for our next hack, we're gonna ask Gemini to extract some data from a web page. So for this example, I have the Dow Jones Industrial Average open in another window and on this page, there is a table containing all the stocks. I'm gonna ask Gemini to extract all the data from the table and turn it into a CSV file. Let's see what we get. And because we want a text response, we wanna go ahead and make sure the appropriate output is set. So I'll switch that to text. Let's go ahead and share out our screen. Hey Gemini, are you there? 
Great. Can you see this web page with the Dow Jones Industrial Average on it? Cool. Do you see the table with all the stocks? Look at this table and extract all of the data from the table and turn it into a CSV file. Okay, so as you can see, it didn't quite extract all the data from the table. So let me share a little secret with you. One thing I recognize is that when you go to extract data from a web page, it's beneficial if Gemini can see the entire page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it so that the entire page, or in this case, the entire table is visible. And now let's try it again from the top and see what we get. Hey, Gemini, are you there? Great. Can you see this web page with the Dow Jones Industrial Average on it? Okay, there's a table that lists all the stocks on the exchange. Can you do me a favor and extract all the data from that table and convert it into a CSV file format for me, please? Okay, in this case, it did a much better job. As you can see, Gemini was able to extract all the data from the table in this case. That said, you can see how Gemini is able to extract data from a web page. Let's move on to the next hack. Okay, so for this next hack, let's go ahead and see if Gemini can actually recognize the image that is being displayed through my camera. So just to give you a heads up, I'm actually using a DBX 286S audio processor, and I want to see if Gemini can tell me what it is. So let's see how well it does. I'll go ahead and click on show Gemini. And I'll show it the picture here. Okay, I see the image. It shows a piece of equipment with several knobs and a digital display. Yes, Gemini, can you tell me what this is, please? Sure, it looks like a DBX brand audio processor, likely a compressor or limiter. It has several knobs, some indicator lights, and a level meter. Yes, can you tell me what type of audio processor it is? Certainly. Based on what's visible in the video, it appears to be a DBX286's microphone preamp processor. Correct. Can you tell me how to use it, please? I can provide general information on how to use it, but I cannot give specific instructions without more details. Do you have a specific goal in mind, like recording a microphone or processing an audio signal? No, that'll be it for now. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Let me know if you have any other questions later. Okay, so there you have it. Overall, not too bad. Now, how in-depth would Gemini have gotten if I had pursued this? Frankly, I don't know. It would have been interesting to see what happens. That said, let's move on to the next hack. So for this example, let's get into the more conversational aspects or the real-time interactivity you can have with Gemini. And let's see if Gemini can act as a software tutor. What I'm going to do is go into Audacity, which is an audio software recording, and I'm going to pretend that the microphone is not working. Let's see how well it does. So I'm going to share my screen. Hey, Gemini, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Cool. How can I help you? Do you happen to see Audacity on my screen? Yes, I do see the Audacity application on your screen. Okay, question for you. I tried to record some audio and it didn't seem to work. Could you please help me with that? Sure, I can help you with that. Let's start with Audacity. Can you describe what you did when trying to record? I just clicked on the record button. It didn't quite work. Okay, you clicked the record button and nothing happened? Can you verify if the microphone input is selected properly in Audacity? I don't know how to do that. Can you show me what to do? Of course, I can help you with that. In the Audacity window, look for a drop-down menu, probably next to a microphone icon. It usually says audio host, recording device, or something similar. Uh, Click I it. I see something called audio setup. How does that, do you think that'll do it? Yes, that is exactly what you need. Click on the audio setup button, and then you will see an input drop-down menu where you can choose the correct microphone. Okay, where is that? Where would that be? Under audio setup, hover over recording device to see the options and choose the one that corresponds to your microphone. Okay, I'm not sure which one that would be. Could you help me with that, please? Certainly under recording devices, do you see an option that says microphone array or mic input? If you are using a built-in microphone, that is likely what you should pick. I'm using an external microphone. Which one would that be? Okay, look for an option that says mic in or something similar followed by a number or a model name. That is likely your external mic. Okay, overall, Gemini was not 100% accurate, yet it did recover and it kind of got me into the ballpark as far as doing some diagnostics. So can it act as a tutor? I believe it has a good shot at doing that. Let's move on to the next hack and see what happens. Okay, for this hack, let's see how well Gemini does when we ask it to be a software tutor. What I'm going to do is ask Gemini a couple questions about this Excel list. 
and let's see how well it does. Let's go back here, share out our screen. Hey, Jim, are you there? Yes, I am here. How can I help you today? Can you see my Excel sheet? Yes, I can see your Excel sheet. It appears to have a lot of data related to product sales. What would you like? My boss asked me to do something specific. They want to see the total sales for each customer's source. Can you help me with that, please? Sure, I can help you with that. To clarify, you want to calculate the total sales for each customer source, which I see in the column labeled customer source. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, I understand. I can help you with that. You want to get the sum of sales for each customer source. Mm -hmm. I would use the SUMIF function in Excel to accomplish this. Would you like me to walk you through it step by step? Okay, so you're saying I could use the sum if function, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Are there any other questions? Actually, I do have another question. Is there another way I can do this and not use the sum if? Yes, there is another way. You could use a pivot table to get the total sales by customer source. Would you like me to explain that to you? Actually, my question is which one would be easier to do? Okay, that's a great question. The SUMIF function is generally easier for a single calculation, as it only requires a simple formula. However, a pivot table is more versatile if you want to analyze the data from different angles and create summaries of other data. Which one do you prefer to learn first? Actually, that'll do it for right now. Let me think about it, okay? Okay, problem. Yep. Let me know if you have any more questions or if you want to explore either of those methods further. I will, thank you. You're welcome. Feel free to reach out if you need any more help. Okay, so that one's debatable. Personally, I would have gone with a pivot table just because, in my view, it's a lot easier to create and a lot more flexible and a lot more things you can do with it. That said, is the sum myth a viable solution? Yes, but it does require a little bit more legwork. So we'll leave that one up to your own discretion. That said, in my view, Gemini did give some good solutions and they were both in the ballpark as being accurate. So that'll be it for this hack. Let's move on. In this case, let's say we want to make a YouTube channel about building wood sheds. So let's see how well Gemini does. I'm gonna start by sharing the screen. Hey Gemini, are you there? Yes, I am here. How can I help you? Cool, can you see my YouTube screen? Yes, I can see your YouTube screen. It looks like you're on the homepage and not signed in. Correct. I want to create a channel dedicated to wood sheds. So I'm going to do a search for wood sheds. Can you do me a favor and tell me if you see my search results? Sure. I see the search results for wood sheds on YouTube. Okay. There are... A I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. I see several videos about building, buying, and comparing wood sheds. Is there anything specific you are looking for? Yes, I want to start a YouTube channel, like I said, but I don't know anything about it. Could you do me a favor and analyze these videos and give me some suggestions as to which ones would be good ones to create? Sure. I see that the video titled $100 Firewood Shed Complete Build Keep Wood Drive has a good number of views and seems like a good starting point. Also, build a firewood shed to store one to two cords of wood. Looks like it could give you some ideas on the structure and design of your woodshed. Do either of those interest you? Uh, kinda. Which one do you think would be the best one to create? The DIY Shed Build Time Lapse, 12x16. Video might be a good choice for your YouTube channel. It shows the entire build process in a time lapse format, which can be very engaging. Is that something you would consider? Uh, maybe. I have a question for you about titles. Can you take titles and copy and reuse them as your own? No, you shouldn't copy and reuse titles from other YouTube videos. It's important to create original titles for your own content. Plagiarizing titles could negatively affect your channel. Is there a particular style or format you like? No, I'm, I'm okay for now. I appreciate your time and assistance. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me know if you have any more questions. Okay, so there you have it. I hope those people don't mind getting a free plug. So anyhow, um, overall, not too bad. Were the results accurate? I think they're okay. If you're starting a YouTube channel, granted a lot more goes into it, yet overall, not too bad. So that said, let's move on. Okay, and there you have it. Nine different hacks as to how you can use Gemini AI. Do you find these hacks to be useful, potentially able to increase your work capacity or something else? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And once you're done that, here are some other ways that Gemini AI can help you with software tutorials.